Hi, good morning. Glad to see everybody out. Uh, a little rainy out, but uh, we need that. So uh, we've been blessed by God. So this morning I want to talk about local church membership. Uh, and we welcome our visitors. I don't, I don't want to forget that. Uh, we ask you to study right along with us and open up your Bibles. If you have any questions about this after services, uh, be, feel free to ask one of the men or me, and we'll try to answer to the best of our ability in accordance to the Scriptures. I thought about, since we've been having so many baptisms lately, uh, we need to start talking about basics in a little bit, uh, about those who are Christians and uh, how we need to partake within the in the body of Christ. And we need to study upon this and try to realize uh, what our responsibilities are at times. And sometimes we uh, forget to, to realize uh, and through our study and, and talking to those new members, uh, we sometimes forget what we need to work with them with, uh, to study with them and to get them to grow uh, within the church as they ought. When we talk about the church, we talk about a universal sense. In Matthew, the 16th chapter, verse 18, where Christ told Peter, he says, I will build my church. He didn't say where he's going to build it. He said he's going to build my church. It affects the whole world. And that's what we talk about when we talk about the, the church of Christ. It is a universal church. But at the same time, it, it's also recorded within the scriptures in being specific sense. In other words, the congregations, the local congregations that are established throughout the world are a part of that universal church that's been established. It's something that we need to, to realize and to look at because when you read the scriptures, 1 Corinthians 1 and verse 2 talks about the church at Corinth, uh, the church at Thessalonica in 1 Thessalonians 1.1, 1, 1. the seven churches of ages, Revelation 1 through uh, 4 and, and such, uh, the church of Jerusalem, Acts the second chapter, verses 46 through 47, the church of Antioch, Acts the 11th chapter, verse 26. These are nothing but a few of the congregations that have been mentioned throughout the scriptures. They are local congregation. Just like the congregation here at Wellsburg, we are a local congregation. The one up in Thomason, Thomason Run, is a local church. The one in 210 Cedar Avenue, down in Moundsville, again, a local congregation. But we make up the whole universal church. But at the same time, we got to realize that in accordance to, to the scriptures and the way it's been set up, that basically all these things fall into place in, in the way God has set things up. When we talk about lo local congregations, we are talking about a congregation that is part of the universal church, but operate as a functioning unit. We have our own elders. We have our own deacons. We have our own preachers. We have uh, teachers within Bible classes. We're separate from one another. And God set this up just in case one congregation decides to fall after false doctrine. Not all are affected. When you read and talk about denomination, what do you hear? Well, this organization uh, got together and they met and, and they decided this is not what they want to accept as part of the gospel. And the rest of the congregations will follow along with it. We are separate. We are a separate unit in accordance to God's word. He left the work up to the individual church on how to get things done at this time. We need to understand that. But the thing is, should I be a member of the local congregation? Some contend that if they've been baptized, they're already a member of the Lord's church. 
and that no other action is necessary. Is that true? Is that in accordance to the Scriptures? Universally, yes, we are a member of the Church of Christ in a universal sense. God added us to the Church. But yet, locally, we must join a church, a congregation that is trying to do God's will. We read about Saul in Acts the ninth chapter, in verse, beginning with verse 26. It says that when Saul had come to Jerusalem, he tried to join the disciples, but they were afraid of him and did not believe that he was a disciple. Well, what did he say here within these verses? He tried to join with them. He tried to become one of them at that congregation at Jerusalem. But they were a little leery of Paul. And I imagine if that happened to us and Paul came in the door right after uh, the things that he was doing, destroying the church, we'd be a little bit shy too, wouldn't we? I kind of understand Jerusalem at that time. Saying, Paul, he's been going around uh, persecuting Christians, putting some to death, putting some in prison, separating the families. We've got to think about this a little bit. The Greek word for join means to glue or cement together, to unite, to join firmly together in accordance to Vine Dictionary. One doesn't join the church universal. They are added to the church. And of course, Acts the second chapter, verse 47. So how does one join a local congregation? Well, Paul desired to be part of Jerusalem, to join themselves with them. And after uh, initial reluctance, and for Barnabas stepping up and, and testifying that Paul has really changed his taught the gospel and talk about Christ, did they come along and let them enter the congregation and, and join with them in trying to do what we need to be doing as Christians? In verse 28 of Acts the ninth chapter, so he was with them at Jerusalem, coming in and coming out. In other words, he, he was now one of the members at Jerusalem. They accepted him. And that's something that uh, we at each congregation have the privilege of, of doing. Of those who maybe come from another area and they bring a letter of, of recommendation, uh, we can sit down and, and discuss with them and find out how they stand and, and accept them in accordance to God's will. Do they believe the truth? Do, are they going to... to do the things in accordance with God's word, or are they going to bring something in uh, as a false doctrine? And then we have to step up and say, uh, sorry. And that's something that uh, we, we do at, at this time. Peter was a member of a local congregation. If you turn to 1 Peter 5th chapter, verse 1, it says, The elders who were among you, I exhort, I am I who am a fellow elder and a witness of the sufferings of Christ and also a partaker of the glory that will be revealed. So again, if we read about Peter, to be an elder, he had to be located at a congregation. And that's the only place he could be an elder at. What happened throughout the years? Church was established, and then you come along a few hundred years later, they decide, well, let's get together and, and, and we'll send a man over here, we'll send another man at that same place, and they all meet, and they sit down and decide what they want to accept out of the scriptures and what they don't. Well, I think it's good to have instrumental music, or, or maybe infant baptism, and before long, you had the Catholic Church established because they were all congregating together, deciding what they want to accept, what they wanted to add or subtract from God's Word. And we need to, to realize, again, that each one of us and each elder 
uh, that is appointed by each congregation is only an elder at the congregation that he belongs to. Why is it necessary for the church or, or for a Christian to join himself to other Christians? Well, if, think about it. Acts, the second chapter. Turn to Acts 2, verses 41 through 42. Acts 2, verses 41 through 42. Then those who gladly received the word were baptized, and that day about 3,000 souls were added to them. After they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship, in the breaking of bread, and in prayer. Early Christians did things together, and what they've done together mutually benefit each one of us. Each one of us here this morning, as we worship God, we are benefiting one another. We are encouraging each other to do what's right. We study God's Word trying to find out what the truth is in Bible study, and also the fact when we sing our songs, we're teaching one another as we sing. We pray on behalf of those who are sick and those who are here trying to, to grow in their faith and trust in God as we should. Thus it is important of worshiping with a sound church, not an apostate church or group. There is no church to be found and one has no choice but to start one. I've known men that went to areas and started a congregation and try to do things in accordance to God's word. And they may be small in size, but they started congregations throughout. That's how the church grew. That's how it multiplied as it should. In Hebrews 10, in verses 23 through 25, we are to, to again, to admonish and be admonished. Uh, let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering. For he that is promised is faithful. Let us consider one another in order to stir up love and good works, not forsaking the assembly of ourselves together, as is the matter of some, but the exhorting of one another, so much the more you see the day approaching. Again, we are to exhort. Can anybody doubt or deny that our assembling together helps us grow, grow stronger? It is for our good. Scriptures teach us that we have an obligation to do that. Our attitude towards life itself should be manifested itself in our work and our worship of God. We'll be able to show others that we enjoy being together and studying God's Word as we should. Do your neighbors realize and, and know where you're going this morning? Or Wednesday night when there's Bible study? Do they know that? Well, I see you dressed up every Wednesday night, and, and you, you go, I know you're going someplace. I'm going to worship God. We're gathering together as Christians to encourage one another, to strengthen one another, to try to get through this life here upon this planet. Our attitude should make a difference to others. When we fail to assemble with the local church, and then we, we become selfish. Have we ever thought about that? If I'm not here because i, I got other things I like to do, we become selfish. Not considering our brother. We have no concern about him. How can we provoke one another to love and good works if we're not if we're at the lake, golf course, uh, at home, uh, instead of being with the saints and worshiping God? How can we learn? How can we grow? What are we saying to our brother? Uh, oh, I like to be around you once in a while. Uh, I can see a husband and wife maybe want to do that, but, <laughs> but really, when it comes down to it, comes to the church. We should love one another 
I want to see everyone here this, this morning and this evening that comes together to worship God. But we want to all get to heaven. I love you enough that I want to, to teach what God's Word says and how we need to apply it and how we need to, to grow. And the only way to do that is to come together to worship God. We need to be here. We need to encourage one another. When we don't come together to worship God as a group, don't you feel weak? Don't you feel like, oh, I can't deal with this life anymore. I don't know what I'm going to do. I can, World War III is ready to break out. And you, if you hear the news all the time, it will drag you down. It'll make you think, what's the use? But when we come together to study God's Word and we encourage one another, we got heaven as our home. All we got to do is do God's will. I need to find out what else I need to correct in my life that we can make it. We need to encourage one another. Yes, I know you have some weaknesses. I know you have some health problems. You need help. You need somebody to talk to. I'm here for you. That's the way we need to be. And that's something that a lot of individuals, when they don't attend services as they should, miss out on. When I was sick in, in, in the hospital and, and Wednesday night came around, I know where I wanted it to be, but I couldn't at the time because I'm locked up in the room. <laughs> but the thing is, and the things that you go through within this daily life, it's nice to hear somebody's voice and to talk to about scriptures. And that's one thing I, I like working with Eric and, and, and the Cohen boys is we do discuss scriptures out there as we're working. And that's beneficial to all of us. It grows. We, we, we encourage one another in what we should be doing. And we still work on that every day we're out there together. We, we, we enjoy sitting down and talking uh, scriptures as we should. And we thought about after the farm is completely done, maybe getting together on a Thursday night and sitting down in his room or his house and sit down and discuss. What do you need to, what bothers you about the scriptures? What, what do you need to, to know? We'll talk about it and, and try to encourage them to do the way God wants us to do and act. Another aspect of the local church membership is discipline. Oh, that's, that's a touchy subject when it comes down to, to discipline. And in the same way with children, as parents, it's touchy about how we need to, to discipline uh, our children at times. God put discipline in government and in the home. And all a man needs discipline. Discipline is for our own good, and God made it that way. In Hebrews 12, chapter and verse 6, it says, For whom the Lord loves, he chastens, he corrects, he improves. He tries to, to get them to, to straighten up because he loves us. If I love my children, I correct them. If you don't, then you're telling your children, I don't care about you. And there are a lot of families that are in that condition in our world today because parents don't take the time to, to, to discipline their children at time. And we as a church need to discipline our members likewise. If you turn and study the whole book of 1 Corinthians, the fifth chapter, where it talks about a brother that was married to his father's wife, they were told what to do by Paul, by God how they were to treat that individual. Is there any wonder why we have to put members, uh, discipline within the local church at this time? We all sin, don't we? 
Sometimes we, we bring reproach upon the church. And we need to be disciplined for it. Do we like to? I, I don't like to. I, I don't like to discipline anybody at, at times. But if I truly love my brother or sister in Christ, I will bring to their attention what they need to do to be found correct before God's sight. And that's what happened to the church there. The church was instructed to withdraw from the erring brother. Why? Well, in 1 Corinthians 5th chapter, verse 5, that his spirit may be saved in the day of the Lord Jesus. Not doing it because I don't like him or I hate him. I don't get along with him. I'm not doing it for punishment or other reasons. I'm doing it because we care about your soul. As for your own good, we should see the blessedness in the church discipline. After all, I, I wouldn't want to be a part of a group that don't care about me because I've done something I shouldn't have and don't say anything about it. If we have a child that's running across the road, are you going to correct that child? Why? Because you love that child. You don't want to see him getting hurt. If I'm doing something as a Christian that is contrary to God's word, then I need to be disciplined. Because we love that child. We don't want to see anything happen to him. That's the way we should feel about our brother or sister in Christ. We do it because we care about their soul. I don't want to see anybody lost in a term damnation. The way it is described within the scriptures, I can't imagine what it would actually be like to suffer all the time forever. Fire, brimstone. You ever get burnt on your hands or whatever, touch something too hot? And uh, you, you feel it for a while, and you may suffer for a few days uh, while it tries to heal back up. But this is forever. You hate somebody that much that you would send them and condemn their soul to eternal damnation? We do it because we love and care about those individuals. We are added to the Lord's church, universal through baptism, but we are joined to the local, con local congregation. Uh, why would one deny himself access to something which God designed for his own good? I've known members that became Christians that won't place their membership anywhere. Why? We need to be able to, to have enough care and love that they should grow. And the fact that do we doubt God's wisdom in this? Sometimes we do. Or is it just that we're seeking to avoid God's discipline because I have a heart problem? Not physical heart, spiritual heart. I don't want to place my membership in any place. Uh, just in case uh, I'm doing something I know is wrong, they can't come back and, and discipline, and, and everybody finds out about it. That's wrong. You have to answer for it. If we do not join ourselves with a local congregation, how then do we carry out Jesus' instruction in Matthew, the 18th chapter, and verse 17? And if he refuses to hear them, tell it to the church. But if he refuses even to hear the church, let him be to you like a heathen and a tax collector. Again, discipline. But we can't do anything unless they're a member of the local congregation. And our hands are tied. And I hate to face God at judgment, day and try to answer why I didn't join myself for a group to help me make it to heaven. We're responsible for promoting unity. 1 Corinthians 1, verse 10, 
Now I plead with you, brethren, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that you all speak the same thing, and that there be no divisions among you, that you be perfectly joined together in the same mind and same judgment. It's the responsibility of each member to strive to keep the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. When we are here, when we can be, it promotes that unity among our brothers. Because we're all studying God's Word, and we're all growing in that. And we always know how we are to act and to treat one another. It makes us united. We realize we all have the same problems. We all have the same uh, faith in, in the God that we are worshiping. And grow as we should. But if you're not here, maybe you'll pick up something that is being taught outside. And when you do come, you cause problems within the congregation. I've seen that happen. We need to be careful with that. Clearly, God's intent is that every Christian join themselves to a local church. He provided that the local church is a vehicle for feeding and oversight of the sheep. Considering just this evidence and answer the question, should I be an active member of the local church? Should I take part? We're all responsible. Okay, blessings of a local church membership. We draw strength from one another when we meet together and worship our Heavenly Father. In Ephesians 5, verse 19, sing and make melody in your heart to the Lord as we are speaking to one another. The songs we just sang this morning, pay attention to the words. Did you listen to them? It's something that we should be putting into our soul, into our hearts, into our minds. It is well, my soul. Is it? Was it well to my soul? Am I standing in God and, and pleasing to Him? We need to question ourselves. We need to ask ourselves, and we're also asking our brother in Christ, or sister in Christ, as we sing. Is it well for your soul? How are you before God at this time? We are able to teach and admonish one another. Colossians, the third chapter, verse 16. We're teaching. We're learning. We should be. It is game when we partake of the Lord's Supper on the first day of the week. We proclaim the Lord's death. And, of course, 1 Corinthians 11, verse 26. Those outside in the denomination, maybe even sometimes in the church, we don't truly understand what this represents. This is a closeness we have with Christ. The day he was offered to, to be sacrificed upon the cross. <laughs> He sat down with his disciples. This is my eat. This is my bread, which represents my body. The fruit of the vine represents the blood that I shed upon that cross. That should draw us closer to God. My mind should be on Him as we partake of this. We should be united in thought, in our faith, what God was capable of doing. Do you thank God every day for, for His Son dying upon that cross for our sins? Walk, working alone, worshiping alone, standing alone, serving alone, it's a little discouraging at times. We should realize that after COVID. How did you feel at home? Oh, this is so hard. I, I got nobody to talk or discuss with. Did you partake of the Lord's Supper on the first day of the week when you was home? Did we pray? Did we sing? 
Do we sit down and study God's Word? Did we have a little Bible study with someone? How did we act when we had that COVID uh, thing going on? How did we feel? And it went on for a month. And, and we sit back and go, oh, I'm so depressed because I got nobody to talk to. Didn't we? And it got to the point, even some of the members didn't even come back after it was lifted. Why? Because they got depressed. They, they felt no need to be here to worship God. In Romans 11, chapter, verses 2 through 4, it says, God has not cast away his people whom he foreknew. Or did he not know, the scripture says of Eliah, how he pleads with God against Israel, saying, Lord, they have killed your prophets and torn down your altar, and I alone am left, and they seek my life. But what does the divine response say to him? I have reserved for myself 7,000 men that have not yet bowed to the knee of Baal. Elijah thought, but myself. You ever feel that way once in a while? I know when Jimmy's at work and I'm sitting at home and him studying or watching a little bit of TV, all of a sudden something creeps over me. It's like, I got nobody to talk to here. <laughs> I'm here by myself. And it gets lonely. It does. And I know there are several here that probably feels the same way. Why? What should we be doing? How should we be acting? God let Elijah know, like, you're not alone. I got 7,000 other men that didn't bail, that bowed to Baal at this time. You're not alone. You're 7,001. And I cheered Elijah up some. Hey, there's others out there. We ever think about being alone at times, and then we finally realize, hey, there's other Christians out there throughout the world. Hey, they feel the same way I do. I'll, I'll get on Facebook and, and, and maybe text some brother from uh, Texas that I know is having health problems. I'll, I'll, tell, I'll let them know I'm praying for them. I'm there. Need somebody to talk to? I'm here. But being alone, standing alone, you ever stand alone at times? <laughs> yeah, I, I get to Walmart once in a while, and maybe the only one in the in a row, and I, I keep looking back like, uh, somebody behind me? <laughs> I need somebody to, to be here. So we need to have a fellowship and a worship. Fellowship and work. Fellowship means joint participation. Fellowship is work, and work means all are working. We're not working alone. If we are working alone, there's a problem. It is good. It's a blessing. We ought to be able to share the work. There are some I can't reach with the gospel, but maybe somebody else can say something that can get them to understand what to try to get across. For this, I'm thankful that there are others that uh, can do that. Ever talk to somebody that, and, and you try to emphasize what they need to need to do to be, become a Christian? Then all of a sudden, somebody else will say something that will click in, and they they understand that. Sometimes we can't always get our thoughts across. At times. Blessings of our beloved brother and brotherly love. In times of physical problems, I thank God for brethren who care. In times of spiritual crisis, some care enough to be there likewise. And that's good to know. Some love enough to reprove, rebuke, and exhort. 2 Timothy, the fourth chapter, verses 1 and 2, when it is needed. The proverb wrote in Proverbs 27, verse 5, 
Open rebuke is better than love carefully concealed. What's he saying? Uh, my husband don't tell me he loves me very often. Well, being men growing up in the years past, we usually don't throw that word love around very often. We don't say it often enough. And I'll admit, I'm one of them, but we do show it through other actions. Sometimes a wife likes to hear that. I love you. I care about you. I want to be there for you forever. A wife might be the same way with her husband. Don't say anything. But yet we, we do show, we do care, we do love. But sometimes saying that and, and, and talking to somebody and say, I care about you, I love you, I, I need to be there for you. Please let me. Yeah, that's odd, that's different. But at the same time, it's a fact. We need to show and, and, and mean it. It even helps when somebody says, we miss you. You've been gone for so long. Glad to see you back. I didn't tell Peggy that. <laughs> That's one. <laughs> Just kind of picked on her a little bit. <laughs> it showed that I cared. And the same way for anybody else. We show, we miss you. I'm glad you're back. I'm glad you're healthy now. I'm glad you're able to get out like you should. And praying for you. Care. The following verses shows our responsibility and our courage in, one, in loving one another. Colossians, the second chapter, verse 2. Let, let their hearts be, let their hearts may be encouraged, being knit together in love, obtaining to all riches of the full assurance of understanding, to the knowledge of the mystery of God, both of Father and of Christ. Then in John, the 13th chapter, verses 34 and 35, it says, a new commandment I give to you, that you be that you love one another as I have loved you, that you also love one another. By this, all will know that you are my disciples if you love one another. If we care about each other, it shows not only within the congregation, it will show to those out in the world likewise. That's why we send the cards out, because we want them to know we care. We miss them. We hope to get well and get back and be with us in worshiping God. I know Nathan doing a video for uh, Sarah, and she, she needs all the, the help that she needs to keep her encouragement up to do what's right, to, to get healthy again. And I told Dan that night that he was here. I said, he needs somebody to talk to. I'm here. I know what you're going through to some degree. I've been through it. But I know yours is a little bit worse than what I went through. I know that. But maybe I can say something to help you to, to go th through what you're doing uh, at this time. Because we care, or we should. And in conclusion, the fact is, we need our local membership. For why? Because in 1 Corinthians 10th chapter, verses 20 through 27, states the fact that we are responsible for one another. We need to be thankful for God for all the blessings He gives to us. We need to be thankful for the blessings associated with being a child of God, a member of the body of Christ, which is the church of Christ. We need to also be thankful for the blessings associated with being a member of a local congregation. All of us have responsibility in that local congregation. We should be loyal to Christ and the responsibilities He has been given to us by Him. 
to be able to be function as a unit God designed that is only possible if each one of us do our part. Then Ephesians, the fourth chapter, verse 16, he says, From whom a whole body joined and knit together by what every joint supplies according to the effectual working by which every part does its share, causes growth of the body for the edifying of itself in love. Think about a body. If we don't take care of each part of our body, guess what? You're going to have problems. It's going to cause you problems. Eric's going to have to have knee surgery. Uh, I know Jim almost died the other night because they gave him medicine, new type of medicine, and his blood pressure dropped down to 106 over 40. And they had to hurry up and get him to the hospital and bring him back. But the fact that because of those veins that he has and the blood problems he has, he needs encouragement. He needs prayers. And there are others, Sarah, that we talk about, Sarah Martin and Dan Martin. Pray for them. Remember them in your prayers at all times. And there are others that are sick. Those are going through cancer treatments. Those are going to have surgeries before long here. Those that had surgeries. We need to be responsible. We need to be there for them. We need to pray for them on a constant basis. Why? Because I care and I love for them. My question is, are you doing your part or have you failed not only God, but also your family also. If you're not helping your family and, and, and uh, doing everything that uh, you can to help them, then I, I feel for you. I really do. I, I looked at this congregation. We are a family. We are all members of the church of God. We are the sons and daughters of God. We are a spiritual family. And that should make us closer than our physical families at times. Question is, are you doing your part? I hope it's beneficial. I'll be talking about the church a little bit more often when I get to speak. Uh, but the fact is, we need to grow. And we're pleading with those who have not yet obeyed the will of God. I haven't said much about this, but you must hear his word. Believe that Christ came and lived and died upon the cross and was resurrected upon the first day of the week, three days later. The fact that we confess him by mouth confession before others, that he can confess us before his Father. We repent of our sins. I'm willing to change my life and live for him, not for myself, not for my own thoughts and wishes. The fact that we need to be baptized, buried with him in a watery grave in Corinthians and Romans 6 chapter, so we can be clean and pure, white as snow. We're clean. Then live a faithful life unto death. We may do these things. We do fall. We do make mistakes within our daily lives. We do sin. We need to go to God in prayer and ask for forgiveness of our sins. If you need help in that department, and that you need encouragement, we can go to God in prayer at this time. Ask Him to, to, to give you the strength and that we support you in trying to overcome your difficulties. It's your soul, it's your destiny. We care enough that we teach the gospel to all. We plead with you to do something before it's eternally too late as we stand and sing the song, Invitation. <laughs>